Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Trey. And let's talk about Tron 3. Because I mean, I already knew this. I thought this was already publicly known, but apparently it's making the rounds in the news. And I just was like, yeah, let's let's talk about it. So, as you guys know that Tron Legacy was a Disney property, right? I mean, it is a Disney property. And it was a sequel to an old classic cult hit you know, um, and Disney wanted to expand on the world of Tron because, of course, Tron had a positive reception in um, Kingdom Hearts 2, and they decided to expand on it. And this was this was at the time where um, this was after after Kingdom Hearts 2 that um, Disney did Disney XD, which Disney XD was supposed to be for their male audience because there have been there were talks in the office about how disney hasn't been all that you know friendly for male audience like a lot of their shows and everything are focused predominantly for females so disney xd existed for things like that and they decided that they also wanted to get they also wanted to get them more male driven things which kind of led to the whole um you know taking some of their male properties and coming up with original properties like um Aaron Stone and Zeke and Luther that kind of stuff right there and of course Tron was up on that list as well so Tron had a show called Tron Uprising if you guys don't remember, it's kind of really cool. It's, um, it took place after the Tron Legacy movie. I know um, some people didn't really didn't really vibe to it, only because it's been a long time or whatever. But the technology was there finally where Disney could really explore the world of Tron, which me and my mom, we watched it. We enjoyed it, especially um, what was good about Tron Legacy was the fact that we got to get some Daft Punk music, and you already know. I'm a big fan of Daft Punk, so let's go. Like, um, random memory assets feel like the the third Tron movie or something like that, or, or was inspired by Tron. If you guys know what I mean, because um, Daft Punk was producers on the Tron Legacy uh, movie as well, and they, I mean, they produced, they did the music production for a lot of the, um, a lot of the movie. So. That's why I'm saying Random Assets Memories it feels like a sequel to Tron Legacy's album. If you guys heard it, you know about Daft Punk, then you know why I'm saying that. Because, you know, of course, Daft Punk can tell a story with their amazing music. And it was kind of cool to see them um, cameo in the movie as well. So, the, now that Tron, um, so, now that they had something with Tron and they were focusing on a little bit more of the original things and trying to get more action oriented things originally they ran into a snag because that's when um bob Iger decided that he wanted to buy um he wanted to buy marvel and star wars so as you guys know that tron legacy was going to be a new I mean, tron was going to be like this cool action driven uh, franchise for disney that will bring in the male audience because they did want male audience. I know some people think that that's crazy or whatever back in the day, but no, Disney really had a male audience issue because of the fact that a lot of their movies and shows focused on females. So it's again, that's why I always say it's weird when you hear people talking about female empowerment or whatever, and females don't get enough time in the spotlight or whatever. And I'm just like, have you guys not seen Disney? Majority of their shows and movies for the past couple of ye uh, the past couple of decades really been predominantly focused on females. Hell, I was growing up watching Disney Channel, and most of their main characters were damn females. The males were there, but as supporting characters or co-leads, and even then, the males were not the focus. It was always the females, and of course, Disney princesses. Nothing wrong with that, but let's stop pretending like females ain't never had a voice or never been, you know, 
on screen before because that's what they like to do today to try to gaslight folks oh females never been able to to do anything even though again disney's first movie that got them on you know the the world map is snow white in this and the the seven doors and who's the main character snow white and and snow white is a what a female so again it's kind of weird <laughs> like you know what i'm saying and then you got the tr to be honest you got the trinity with disney snow white cinderella and um aurora that that is literally disney's trinity for disney princesses that those are the leaders if you want to like you know how we got batman superman and wonder woman well disney got snow white cinderella and aurora hell they had disney parks that literally were modeled after those three movies mainly so come on now let, let again let's stop pretending like you know disney has a female problem because they love trying to say that that's why it was weird when they the reason why bob went for marvel and star wars is because it had a heavy predominantly male audience just like when they went for power rangers predominantly a large male audience because they there were criticism back in the day for Disney. I don't think if people remember that Disney did have criticism about how they're not, they're family friendly, but they're not focused on, they don't have a large male um, audience because, you know, males are like, eh, it's Disney. They have mostly everything for females, which that was, a, that was true back in the, you know, that was true. Again, I'm not knocking Disney. Disney has a few movies or whatever, but predominantly, predomin their predominant target wasn't um, just kids. Their predominant target were women. And there's nothing wrong with that one. But when you have stuff like Tron and, you know, um, the whole catalog for Disney XD or old classic Disney movies that did, you know, feature a heavy action thing and Disney wanted to do more of that, Okay, cool. That's that's fine. That's great. That's what people want to see. And then, you know, you finally have something that people could attach to on, but because you decided, hey, we're going to we're in the business of buying Marvel and um Star Wars, let's ditch everything. Because Joseph um uh, Kaminsky recently delivered what might uh, be the greatest legacy sequel ever made for Top Gun Ma um Maverick, right? But the filmmaker uh, previous efforts in receiving a beloved brand didn't fare um, as well with anyone who would be um, would hope. So Tron Legacy wasn't a bond, uh, a bomb, but it quite it didn't quite prove profitable enough to have Disney falling over itself to get a sequel out there as soon as possible. And right there is that Disney thought that. That was a problem with Disney too back in the day. Disney thought that they can just throw out something and then think that because it's by Disney that it will get people. No, a lot of a lot of classic Disney movies that that I remember watching too. And I'm I'm, I'm not talking about just their animated movie. They used to do some live action stuff that you guys and I'm not talking about live action remakes, but like live action movies that were under the brand of Disney that a lot of people, you know, they're not popular with the with folks. But they're good movies, you know, because at the time, it's, it's like, you know, when you built up Disney princesses and kid-friendly stuff, that's what people expect from Disney. But instead, forgetting that Disney had other things. Just like um, Disney Channel pre, what, 2000, pre-early 2000, Disney used to have serious shows. Like, the shows weren't comedy they were drama series the kids actually got to grow and learn from that kind of stuff before the comedy stuff took over or whatever because you know when they weren't getting the highs the high numbers that they wanted or whatever they they pivot which i understand it's a business decision you have to pivot but at the same time if you don't let stuff grow and if you don't give a chance to anything how can you how can you let anything grow like how can things grow or change if all you're worrying about is just a profit. You know what I mean? Because they had a lot of money. They had a they had some money where they were able to, you know, 
you know, test the waters because I feel like with Tron Legacy, the reason why is because, I mean, hell, you're doing a movie that's, you're doing a sequel to a movie that's been years, years, and, and then, not to mention, there was barely any marketing for it or anything because, you know what I would have loved? I would have loved for Disney to officially make some, some Tron Legacy stuff. I, I don't think I remember even seeing Tron Legacy stuff. Um, I remember seeing like Marvel promote um, a little bit of Tron Legacy by having the characters like that, but like there, like the lightsaber black black stuff like that. That entire Tron Legacy's entire uniqueness, a world or whatever. I mean, Disney slept the fuck on that right there. You could have easily made some costumes. You could have made some keychains. You could have made some cool merchandise that would have been amazing. But then they just kind of. It just kind of fumbled the ball with that one. If you really think about it, I would love to, you know, to have um, a jacket that's embroidered with the Tron Legacy colors. You know what I'm saying? Like you didn't think you didn't think about clothes, merchandise, or anything. You just kind of was like, hopefully it'll make a sale. And then of course, when you have an opportunity to do something too, the a lot of things too, because they always look at merchandise too. A lot of times they don't put a lot of time and effort into merchandising these things because it costs money to make merchandise or whatever. But y'all need to look at how Japan put merchandise out for that stuff. It is premium quality. It isn't cheap. It isn't just something that, you know, you can just get off the street or whatever. And it doesn't look like something coming from Party City. That's another thing too. But again, then this movie didn't really have that much of a promotion. I don't remember having, I don't remember seeing a promotion for it, but then at, at, at the same time, it, it, you know, Disney was going through some transition, acquiring companies or whatever. And of course, because Tron didn't make the, the money that they wanted, they were just like, oh, well, screw that. Even though, you know, Tron 3 were, was in production and people, there were people who were waiting to see Tron 3 and wanted to see, you know, what more Disney could do because they did have, because um, there was a show called Tron Uprising, which is to take place in between, I mean, after or before. I think it was a in between or after. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've seen Tron Uprising. And what could have happened is you could have used that show to lead into Tron 3. You know what I'm saying? That would have that would have gave crevice to people who are watching it on Disney XD, and then when they went to go, they could have dragged their parents to go see it or whatever and stuff like that, because the technology was there. You know, now that you know, finally, finally the, the technology was there, but you just kind of yeah, because I mean, and then imagine if they made some kind of vehicles like that too. Oh my, oh my God, or give you like or give you like vehicle detail stickers or something like that. That could like glow the car up like that and stuff. Uh, I mean, Disney, you slept on you slept on some money with Tron, to be honest. Especially how um, it was designed afterwards. Man, you could have easily made some. The filmmaker, the filmmaker worked on the project for years, but ultimately abandoned all hope. But his recent comments on the scrapped um, Tron Three has generated some in, um, some interesting discussion, right? So, in a recent interview, Kroninsky uh, effectively blamed the failure of the third installment on the House of Mouse decision to purchase Marvel and Lucasfilm, with known IP suspending a niche um, sci-fi fantasy property. Uh, while there's a degree of truth on what Korinsky said, it can't be overlooked um, after the aftermath of Legacy that it was publicly revealed to be a disappointing box office um, return were also a huge factor once it does settle and the numbers will crunch. Not only that, but Tron Ares remain um, in an active development and helmed by Jared Leto as the lead um, as the lead role. Why would Jared Leto be in there instead of the instead of um, Sam, the guy who plays Sam? Um, so it's not though the studio has tossed the entire um, universe on Scott head, right? But he talked he talked about it, and I I understand like get Disney. I, I mean I get it. Disney wanted some money and they wanted something really easy and quick, and that's the problem is that because they did the same thing when they had John Carter. John Carter was um, John Carter from Mars. Good good attempt at the movie, but. Again, it wasn't promoted like that. And then, you know, you expect it to just show up and have money for a 
a franchise that people aren't, um, you know, aren't aware of, you know, and that's the problem with, with I think with Disney back in the day is that they were so used to so much instant fast money that when they finally get something, they um they barely put time and effort into promoting it or whatever, and then just hoping that by name it'll it'll make some money because I mean some people did know John Carter. I'm quite sure, but a lot of people didn't, and a lot of people didn't know what to expect because they want, see, Marvel, I mean, not uh, Marvel, but Disney wanted stuff like what uh, Marvel and Lucasfilm, DC Universe, they, they wanted that kind of stuff, that's what they wanted, and they couldn't get it because, you know, it's Disney, and I don't think Disney, I don't think Disney should have been trying to run after the trends or whatever you should have been happy with what you got or whatever and i understand you want to make a little bit more profit but at the same time y'all was getting lazy with your original stuff your original cartoons you got lazy with them um your disney princess movies you had half-baked sequels that nobody asked for <laughs> you know what i mean and especially if you didn't put you didn't put the same time and effort into those sequels as you did, you know, with your original, you know, the first movies. So that's another thing too. And of course, you have a lot of female-driven things, you know, and it's okay. But it's kind of funny when you're trying to change the course of how everything, how people see the company, and then expect it to change overnight. Like the, literally, the only reason why, you know. Disney sort of is still standing kind of is because of Marvel and Lucasfilm because Marvel and Lucasfilm you know had a heavy male dominant presence and a lot of those fans love those characters and Disney was like we need to make movies and shows with them so people can you know so we can profit and then people can uh, more males can come into the franchise that's why you see today how people are complaining about Oh, is being is um is man hating or whatever because again, Lucasfilm, Marvel, Tron, John Carter, um Disney XD, uh, the shows that were on Disney XD were predominantly for men and the target audience were mostly men. Nobody's not saying that women don't watch it, but everybody knows that back in the day, you know, Disney had a predominantly female target um to kid range, but mostly females. It is. It's true. It's true. And to get mad that Tron Legacy didn't meet your expectations, what? Why did you go in there with high expectations? Again, it was from it was from a franchise that's what was like forty years old at the time. You never really promoted it that much. There was hardly any marketing for it. And then what? You just prayed to Jesus that it was going to be successful. But then you said, "Fuck it." because it didn't make the money that you wanted it but you know hey we're in the purchase of doing lucasfilm and marvel so yeah you know fuck the whole trying to do more with our original ips you know what i mean because i think tron was an original ip for disney and then the stuff that they had on disney xd was for them too um was original as well so it's kind of one of those things like damn you know you had an opportunity to do something and grow it but you wanted fast access money instead of actually working towards it and that was a that's a problem to me and now people are like man we could have got tron 3 from it if you know if we you know didn't get star wars or whatever and um but i don't know if people would have been happy happy about Jared Leno, <laughs> but the it is kind of funny that you know you have the you have the former former director of the movie saying like hey you know as soon as Disney decided that they want to purchase Marvel and Star Wars a lot of a lot of stuff has been scrapped and it's not even just Tron it was other things that was scrapped as well because at the same time they were also buying Power Rangers too so they were buying Power Rangers and they were buying uh, Marvel and they were buying they were buying um star wars so you had a lot of things you know um but it was it i think i think the i think overall is that 
what they could have did is learn from the failure of Tron Legacy and then grow the franchise a little bit more. Because if you really wanted to be epic, you got to put some time and effort into it. And you can't just expect it. It's going to just, go, you know, go over in the first in the first, you know, the first time you do it. Because, again, we haven't seen this property in a long time. And that's the thing that I think a lot of properties that Disney had back in the day, especially the ones that they wanted to do sci fi and action genres, they would give up on it real quick because it failed at the box office or there wasn't no promotion. Cause some of the, some of the stuff that Disney did have, you wouldn't have known because Disney didn't promote it at the time, but they made sure they promoted their Disney princess, female led movies and shows though. You get, you get what I'm saying. And they made sure they had merchandise for that. But when it came to their action driven boy stuff, they didn't. And again, I'm not saying that Tron 3 probably would have been perfect or anything, but I would have loved for Disney to put more time and effort into their original shit than to take Disney, I mean, to take Marvel and, and Star Wars, because yeah, it was good at first, but now look at Star Wars and Marvel. People are falling out of love with them. People are sick of them. So, uh, you know what I mean? There, There's a division in fandom that shouldn't be there you know, is a boy versus girl thing kind of going on. The male characters are getting replaced for females, you know, in a predominantly male orientated, you know, franchises. You know what I mean? It, it, and it's just dumb. It is it is literally dumb for no reason. And it's just like, you see how much they put time and effort into Star Wars and Marvel. Oh, we need more diversity. We need more females. We need more this and that. But again, when it comes to their original stuff, they won't even put that that same amount of effort into it. The only time they put some stuff into their own stuff is when they're doing a live action remake. And again, that one full of bullshit too. It's just kind of like, damn, Disney, can you t can you actually work on your original IPs that you do have or your original stuff and actually put some time and effort into it? When was the last time we seen Mickey and the gang star in a movie? You could have easily took Mickey and them and put them in an action setting or whatever. And you could have created a whole new franchise with Mickey Mouse and them in an action sci-fi thing. It could have been easily done. It definitely could have been easily done. You you did you do it with Kingdom Hearts with Mickey and them. You could have easily did something like that. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. Hell, you got Kingdom Hearts and you don't even want to do shit with that one neither. Only video games, but you ain't made no TV shows. They ain't never been in the parks or anything. There's no rides based on anything. There is nothing. So again, what the fuck, Disney? So I don't know. I just kind of find it like enlightening to see this kind of thing because it, it I mean, it's half true. It is true. Yeah. The Tron legacy didn't make the money that Disney wanted. Um, but I don't think Disney should have gave up on it. I think Disney should have been working on expanding the franchise, making, you know what I mean? Making, making the franchise something because again, Y'all, uh, a lot of these, a lot of these companies, especially entertainment, have to understand you can't just throw something out there and expect it to get. It. It's the same problem with WB. WB expect a lot, a lot of their movies. Ever since the Dark Knight happened, they expect all of their movies to make a billion dollars. And it's just like you, can't, you can't have this high expectation for your movies when a lot of people haven't seen what you're trying to do. Or your movies, you, you know what I mean? Like, the only thing that you had at the time was Batman. So, when Man of Steel came out, you couldn't have expected it to make a billion dollars. But it is. It's the same thing. That's why That's why when people will be like, why, why I'm saying why I think, why I said the Batman is a failure. I'm not saying Batman is a failure um, commercially. What I'm saying is it's a failure for the studio because the studio was thinking, like, it's a Batman movie. It should have made a billion dollars because the other Batman movie made a billion dollars. That's the same thing that Disney's doing. They're looking at when they had something successful and it made a lot of bank. Okay, cool. The next thing that they do needs to make the same need to make the same amount of money or more. And when it didn't, they kind of they was like, fuck it. You get what I'm saying? That's why that's why I'm saying like these studios need to understand like. As long as you're making money and as long as the movie is making back its budget, 
you know, maybe not to have high expectations because again, you have to make sure your audience is familiar with this stuff before you can just throw it out there. And especially if you're not going to give any time or effort into it. That's all I'm saying. But it is what it is. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.